Yeah, I think so. We all good? Yep. All good? Yep. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Detective Superintendent Shane Addison. I'm the officer in charge of the Serious Crime, uh, serious Organised Crime Investigation Branch. On Thursday, the 18th of July, uh, police attended a Brogdon address and conducted a search for drugs. Um, at that location, police located, located approximately 198 grams of nidazines, 200 Xanax tablets, 98 uh, suboxone strips in quantities of Valium, Diazepam and Oxycodone tablets as well as about $15,000 in cash. As a result of that search, a 47-year-old man and a 45-year-old woman who were resident at that address were arrested and they were charged with three counts of trafficking and controlled drug. Both of those people have received police bail and will next appear in court at the Adelaide Magistrates Court on the 2nd of October. Saipol is extremely concerned that drugs containing nidazines are being sold locally. Nidazines, also uh, a subfamily of, uh, sorry, uh, also the subfamily of pro-nidazines, are uh, suspected, uh, sorry, are the subject, or were the subject of a SA Health um, alert on 19 July. Um, that alert was not in connection with the search that we conducted, the two aren't connected. Um, nidazines are a specific compound uh, that was originally, uh, or a class of compounds originally designed as a synthetic opioid. Uh, they have no known medical application. Um, they are extremely dangerous, and forensic testing of the drugs that we located on the 18th indicate that at least one of those nidazines is about 25%, uh, sorry, 25 times more powerful than fentanyl while some of the other nidazines located were between 100 and 2,000 times more powerful than morphine. Um, people in possession of these drugs should be aware that they are being mixed with other known drugs, including oxycodone and uh, methamphetamine and other drugs, and that they may in fact be purchasing them or consuming them uh, accidentally or without any knowledge that they exist. Um, unfortunately, these drugs are extremely potent and are uh, more than capable of creating fatalities and serious overdoses. Uh, I'll take some questions. Oh, no, sorry, we'll just go to Dr. Cox. Sorry? I'm going to go to Dr. Cox, but it's Thank you. So, um, yeah, so as has been said, these drugs are extremely worrying. They fall into a class of what we call novel synthetic opioids. So opioids are a class of drugs that contain things like heroin and fentanyl. And as has been said, these nitrazines are hundreds of times stronger than those. So if anyone ingests these drugs by any means, snorting, injecting, eating, there is a very high risk of overdose and death. Opioid overdoses do result in respiratory depression and death. So anybody who uses these drugs is at risk of dying. Because they have been mixed in with other drugs, such as methamphetamine or GHB, what happens is people are inadvertently taking them and not even they don't even know that they have taken them. And that, of course, increases the risk of overdose. What we are concerned about is as well that it is not just dependent people who use recreational drugs who are at risk, it is also people who use recreational drugs maybe just once off. As was mentioned, the oxycodone tablet, if someone just recreationally uses a drug, a street board, and it is important to remember these drugs are illegally manufactured, they're not prescription drugs, so that oxycodone tablet was an illicit street board oxycodone tablet that had been contaminated with nitazines. If someone uses a, one of these substances just inadvertently once, they are at risk of dying. So this is a very, very serious problem and people are not even aware that they're taking them. Dr. Cock, that um, oxycodone pill from last week or two, a couple of weeks ago yes. contained protonidazine. What, yes. What's the difference between nitazine and protonidazine? Look, they all form a class of the nitazines and as a group, these are highly potent synthetic opioids. What happens is in the way these drugs are manufactured illegally, and remember illegal substances, they just keep changing little sidearms, chemical chains. Um, their effect on breathing, their effect on the risk of overdose are all exactly the same. They're just slightly different potencies. That being said, if something is 25 times stronger than fentanyl, or 100 times stronger than fentanyl, the chances are it's going to kill you. Can you explain the effect on the body if that nitazine is ingested? Yeah. 
absolutely. So opioids as a whole group and medicines in particular, because they're so strong, they result in loss of consciousness, so people pass out. They also, if you look at the person's pupils, the pupils are really, really tiny causes respiratory depression, so people essentially stop breathing. So people will turn blue, so stop breathing and loss of consciousness, and that is what leads to the death. Why are nitazines being used um, as an agent? Is it, a real, is it like cheap ingredient or why a drug's been cut with it? Yeah, I can't really comment on why the dealers would be, would be using them or making them. I think drug markets change over time, over decades. So there are always new substances coming in and out of a drug market. These products have been around actually for a very long time, but as was said, they are so potent that they never actually became a legal sort of opioid that's used in a medical sense. They're so potent they've always been illegal. Is this something that is addictive or a drug like this? Look, I think in terms of being addictive, I think the person stands a high chance of passing away before they have a chance to become addicted to it. So the opioids that are much lower doses, opioids are very well known for being dependence-forming substances. But I think what we're talking about here is an opioid that is so potent that I don't think people are going to get the opportunity to use it multiple times. That's a huge risk. That naloxone can counter its can yes. counter the nitazine or the op opioid. Yes, absolutely. So take on naloxone. I've actually got a little example here of the intranasal one. So Nixoid or take on naloxone is an agent that reverses any opioid overdose. So whether someone has overdosed on heroin, morphine, street oxycodone, prescribed oxycodone, or nitazines. If someone suspects that by the person lying there unconscious that it is an opioid overdose, you can use the naloxone, which either comes in an injectable form or the intranasal spray, and it will reverse it. Bearing in mind these are very potent opioids, and you may need to use it a few times to have any effect. And so everyone, if there is an opioid overdose like this or a suspected opioid overdose, really important to dial triple zero and call SAS as well. And it's important that everybody has this on hand. Now, you can get these take-home naloxone products from over 400 pharmacies across the state. It's um, You don't need a prescription and it is free of charge. So we're encouraging everyone who might encounter someone who has an opioid overdose to get hold of these. And, you know, that's... If you, can, you can use it on other people, you can use it on friends, you can keep it for yourself. So we're just encouraging any sort of people who might encounter an overdose to keep this on hand. And this is just intranasal. It's in your nose, two sprays. What's the window to be able to use it, though? Um, I would say if someone is unconscious and you don't know why they're unconscious and you think it could be a drug overdose, I would use it. Um... The thing with an opioid overdose is because the person is not breathing, you do only have a certain amount of time to use an antidote before they pass away, unfortunately. So that's why we encourage as much of this out there as, as we can. And if you know if people are using recreational drugs and they make that choice to use a recreational drug, make sure that you are using in the vicinity of friends or people you know, so that if something does happen, they can use this on you. Make sure that you get the antidote and have it on you. If you are using recreational drugs and you're not sure what you're using, just use very, very, very tiny amounts if you are going to use at all. And since the, uh, the notice uh, on July 19, has there been an increase uh, in people accessing the... Take on naloxone, the antidote. South Australia very proudly, has probably got the best take-home naloxone program in the whole country. So over the past two years, we have been rolling it out everywhere. Um, we are one of the very few states that has that many pharmacies. So has it increased in the last short while? No, it's increased over the last two years. So we were sort of proactively doing that. It is also available by emergency departments in the hospital. So if someone presents to the hospital with an opioid overdose, the emergency department staff know to discharge that person home with a few, a few, a couple of these boxes. We encourage to give out a few, not just one. So there's increased testing at the hospital for opioid. Strains. The hospital, yeah, the hospitals have always been aware of opioid overdoses in various forms. 
Um, and so most certainly the metropolitan um, emergency departments have sent out a very broad message to all the hospitals that these opioid overdoses may well be encountered and to give these agents within the hospital whether you're sure or not sure what it is. Final questions for the doctor before we move to yes. detective. Happy to that. <laughs> <laughs> you really well. So. Um, thank you. Thank you. Does, does SAFEL have any idea why nitazines are increasingly being used to, as a cutting agent? Uh, nitazines aren't used as a cutting oh. agent. They are a, a primary drug, if you like, and then um, the information we have is that they then cut with other agents to, to if you like, spread them out. Um, remembering that 0.1 of a gram is a saleable amount in relation to these. So when you've got 98 grams that are for sale at 0.1 of a gram each, uh, that gives you some idea, A, of the potency, and B, how far those uh, that 98 grams would spread once cut with other agents. But so if drugs being like sold as meth, why isn't it just meth? Like why has someone added a nitrous into it? Um, at this stage, as you can imagine, these are relatively new. They've only really been in circulation in Australia for about two years. So the information as to why um, that has uh, eventuated um, really isn't known, uh, other than, as Dr. Cott indicated, um, the drugs industry is an evolving industry that continues to move at various times. So the motivations for moving into this space are really unknown at this point in time. Might be a silly question, but with these this couple that have been arrested, so they were making it or were they trafficking it? And do you have any leads for other people who might be doing the same thing? So there's no information whatsoever that nordazines are manufactured in Australia. We believe that all nordazines in Australia are being imported. Um, there's no indication anywhere that they're being manufactured locally. However, um, clearly they're in a position where they're being um, cut down uh, and pops and potentially mixed with those other drugs that we've mentioned uh, in a local setting. Um, we also have no information that these particular couple are coordinated with any larger uh, drug importations or organised crime groups. Shane, I note that this raid happened last week on the 18th. On the yes. 19th, it was, we were made aware that someone had almost died from a nitazine um, overdose. Is this a direct response to that overdose the previous no, week? No, uh, it is not. The, the two incidents are completely unrelated. We have no information tying the uh, overdose, which occurred, I believe, on the 8th of July, uh, to the raid that we conducted on the 18th. Are these drugs being found just sort of in Adelaide or in regional areas as well? Uh, our seizures at this stage have uh, predominantly been uh, in Adelaide metropolitan area, um, but um, clearly, I think the way they've been distributed, um, they could be located anywhere, and we certainly would have seen them broadly across uh, all of Australasia. And when you say um, you've, you know, seized 198 grams of nitazines, how far does that go? Like, what's the street value, or how many deals is that, or how many customers does it supply? Um, we're still working with the forensic analysis to work out uh, what. Uh, that would mean in real terms. So I can't give you a street value. However, as I said, as a general rule, these drugs would be sold as 0.1 of a gram, which would indicate that there's potentially up to about 2,000 street dealers available in what was seized. So why would drug dealers try and acquire this nitazine if they know it kills people? I think all drug dealers are in the business of making money. And so if they think that they can make a profit from dealing a drug of any type, and this couple clearly had multiple drugs in their position, so they were dealing in multiple types of drugs, um, if there's profit in it, um, then drug dealers will uh, utilise that and take advantage of people who uh, are perhaps are vulnerable or are drug users to increase their profit margin. Is the safe all aware that any of these nitazines, did they pop up at the spin-off festival last Friday with any drug arrests in relation to the festival last Friday? Uh, no nitazines at the festival, other than, uh, and I can't tell you uh, in relation to what else may have occurred at that uh, festival, I don't have any information about the twins today. Are these the first nitazine-related arrests we've had in SA? Uh, no, uh, I believe we've had six previous seizures since January 2022. Um, this would be the second largest seizure of nitazines we've had. Are you aware of any stats on like border force um, stoppages at <coughs> our borders? I have to get you the yeah. border force. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So we might just go through some photos now. If you guys want some vision. Um, <coughs> 